Hi everyone, so today we're joined by uh, Polly Hall, so thanks Polly for joining us. Um, so what we'll be doing is just having a little chat about your experience being on the prison residencies. So we get straight in and um, if you could just tell us a little bit about your arts practice. So I came at this as a relatively newcomer to the arts, um, especially sort of as a background, um, having a background as a writer, which is creative arts, but in terms of visual arts, I haven't had much um, experience or practice in the public realm. So it was interesting for me because a lot of the other artists are visual artists and they um, have studied art um, at uni or, or they've been doing it for many years. So my, my sort of approach to it was through um, the ideas that I was having for the project and using the space and how I could respond to that through writing and just the ideas that I was having about um, mainly imprisonment of suffragettes. Mm -hmm. So that was yeah. sort of the political prisoner angle yeah. um, and the women prisoners of that time. Yeah. So what um, changed for you? Obviously, your background is writing and obviously you've moved into being more of a creative arts. What what was the shift for you in that? How did you find that? I've always liked sort of conceptual art and I have visited a lot of um, installations and exhibitions. So I remember visiting the Venice Biennale and I just love all that sort of I really get it. I know some people don't really get <laughs> conceptual art and um but I I find when I'm writing I'm writing quite visually so mm -hmm. in my my first novel The Taxidermist Lover I was visualizing how that would look on a screen um sort of filmically so my writing does come from a, quite a visual angle mm -hmm. and I I kind of um like to look at metaphor in my work so what things represent um, and that's why I came up with with the idea sort of quite late on in the in the process leading up to it um, I was just suddenly thinking about balloons and how they represent speech and air and how our voices are represented by by air as the element so that's where I was coming from with with the ideas that sort of preliminary ideas for the project yeah and how did you go to, on to develop those ideas for the for the project was it all stemmed from a writing background or was you trying to push more into an arts practice yeah I was trying to I mean my my initial idea was to, to diarise the whole experience which I did so every day I wrote something um sort of from a personal perspective about what was happening and the things I'd researched on that day or leading up to that day and also interactions with people because there were a lot of visitors coming in yeah. so I was recording their insights into what they sort of knew about suffragettes or what they learned or what they what they found you know in response to the the things that I was putting in the cell so I had initially thought of filling the balloons with helium that didn't kind of work out because of the environment it was so cold they just dropped mm -hmm. so I immediately switched to blowing them up just through um, my breath mm -hmm. and uh, which is obviously quite time consuming yes. and tiring but I also left balloons for visitors to also fill up and that was really great sometimes I'd turn up the next day and there'd be balloons bobbing around wow. that filled up which I thought was a really lovely sort of interactive way of of reaching the audience and I had some really nice conversations with people coming in um and I and I set up a kind of uh, an area where people could write down the names of women that have positively influenced them and then they put them onto 
um, the colours of the suffragette movement onto little slips of paper and then they pasted them into a board that I'd had um, which had little holes in so it sort of like looked like the suffragette bag and so many people came in and filled that in men and women and were sometimes quite moved by the experience because they were having to think about mm. how uh, women in their life had influenced them yeah. So I, I, I hadn't anticipated it being quite so um, affecting, um, but I guess that's one of the aims of what you're doing with an art practice is trying to get people to think about certain things. So in that regard, I'm quite pleased that it did that, um, even though at the beginning I was thinking, oh, I'll just write some words um, and make some poetry films. So yeah, it, it did. It did develop quite a lot in the short space of time. Definitely, and I think it's for you especially. Obviously, you get people to think with your writing, but this is trying to get people to think in a completely new way, which has been really fascinating to see that develop. Mm. Um, what started your interest within looking at the suffragettes? I had read a bit that Shepton Mallet Prison had. Uh, imprisoned some suffragettes yeah. in the early 1900s and I'd I'd sort of gone on that angle because I know there were a lot of other Victorian women prisoners but I wanted to go on the fact that it's very current now that women are um, still repressed in terms of their free speech or their equality mm -hmm. and I thought it was just a very current thing relating back to almost 100 years ago when women didn't even have the right to vote. So even though they'd been campaigning for many decades before the suffragettes became sort of like a militant movement, uh, they then kind of led by the Pankhursts, they decided to make their, um, their protests more active um, and through doing that, through smashing windows or creating disturbances and protesting, they were actually arrested and, and imprisoned. So I wanted to maybe highlight as well current um, issues of free speech for journalists around the world who are imprisoned now in this, you know, in 2021, and they are... Um, their voices are still contained or censored or trapped. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I, I, I found it actually was resonant with today's climate of censorship, even though we're talking about women a hundred years ago. Definitely, and a hundred years sounds like a long time, but actually it's a very short period of time. And, mm. and looking at how much has changed, but also how little has changed. It's quite, must have been quite a conflict in research pattern because um, as you say, you're looking at things that happen present day, uh, comparing that to what happened a hundred years ago. Is there anything in particular that stuck out for you while you're doing your research? Um, I mean, the brutality was, was something that was very jarring as I was sitting in the cell as a free person, I could go home every evening. Um, I wasn't contained there. I still felt the sort of oppressive energies and the fact that these women would have had to do labor. They would have had to leave their families at home. They would be um, on hunger strike. A lot of the suffragettes chose to do that because of their way of creating more publicity for their for their movement mm -hmm. and as a result of the hunger strike they were then force fed which was a brutal harsh disgusting kind of um, punishment um, but through that they would get more supporters and more sympathy for their cause so yeah that I was thinking a lot about that actually in there um, the sort of physical effect on the body and actually being in that environment even though it's a decommissioned prison it's a very cold dark sort of austere building that has all this this history loaded in the in the stone and the the metal and 
and it you really feel it when you're in there so I was yeah. I was actually physically feeling the effects of of all those um all the atmosphere that had kind of been created from what had come before so when you've been looking at the like brutality of um, how people, well, how the women were treated. How did you find uh, being within a prison setting and also working with um, or among other female artists? What was that experience like for you? Sorry, I missed something blipped then on your question. Oh, I sorry. The question. Um, so obviously you're looking at the brutality of how women were treated um, in, within Shepton Prison. Obviously there were some nasty things that did happen within the prison settings, especially for suffragettes and women in general. What was it like being uh, within a prison setting, working among other women? Uh, what was that like? So obviously, as a writer, I imagine some of your time is spent alone rather than working in a group. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a writer, I am always on my own unless I go and join a writing group. Um, so being among other women artists was it was a really enriching experience actually and I learned quite a lot they were very generous their time and experience so um even like watching someone else work is inspiring and mm. I find I could use that either within my my writing practice or just as a kind of visual prompt for something I might do in the future and yeah. I think you know, it kind of gives you permission when you see someone else working a certain way, you think, oh, that's okay, I can try that. And and I do like to experiment with different things. So yeah, it was very encouraging to work with other women in that setting and um, just to see how their work was developing as well, which was very interesting based on their research. So even though it was all, we were looking at all women prisoners, um, as a kind of broad spectrum we were also looking at quite sort of narrowing it down to our own kind of um, sp a specialist sort of angle and um, yeah I, I, I found some of their work just fascinating it's just re really really enriching. Oh good so obviously looking at how other people were working within that environment, was there any room for you to be able to collaborate with other artists or were you able to work with any of the public at all? Yeah, I did. Um, a couple of the other artists used some of my words in their work, which mm. was great. So I had, I had written some poetry um, and they'd taken some lines to use within their work, which was, that's, that's really good. I, I enjoy that sort of collaboration um, and also um, I kind of looked at um, maybe in the future doing some collaborations as well so it might be something that comes out of this because um, I, I really sort of felt some of some of the other artists we were we were on the same wavelength so I think the sort of legacy of this type of project means that you can go on and you can create new work, which, mm. uh, you know, it's not just ended at the end of end of the residency. So I think, yeah, we'll watch this space and see what comes out of it. Yeah, definitely. So what would be your future plans then? Is it going to be Polly the writer or Polly the artist? <laughs> oh, do you know what? I have, I, I have huge imposter syndrome as a writer, even though I've got a book out and I you know, I, I need to get over that. So I'm like way like massive imposter syndrome as an artist, but I've been kind of just putting myself out there and I really like performance art. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't even see myself doing that, but I've done a few things even during the residency. I nipped over to Glastonbury and did something with um, another artist and, and lots of like different sort of multidisciplinary artists. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on kind of lockdown experience so yeah we'll see what comes out of it we've got um, a Shepton on show um, art performance within the whole town this yeah. Friday which is basically in the windows the shop windows so yeah we'll just just see what comes out of it yeah definitely 
Well, as you said, Polly, we'll be all be watching this space and seeing what you're doing. And we really appreciate your time for this chat. It's been fantastic. So good luck with all of your making. And thank you again. It's been brilliant. Thanks, Amanda.